2016 could mark a turnaround for the personal computer market after a brutal outing last year. In 2015, PC shipments fell 10.5 percent from 2014, their biggest yearly decline ever. IDC, the International Data Corporation, says global PC shipments fell below the 300 million mark for the first time last year since 2008. Now, the reasons for this cited by IDC, the slowdown in China and other emerging markets, more consumers shifting to mobile devices, and better PCs with longer life cycles. But 2016 is shaping up to be a better year for the market. Both IDC and research firm Gartner say PC replacements should pick up again this year after the market hits a bottom. Most PC users are long overdue for an upgrade. Worldwide PC shipments are forecast to rise as much as 4% in 2017. And that positive outlook is echoed by the CEO of Razer. Razer is a world leader in connected devices and software for gamers. Now, it doesn't sell the games. It sells millions of high-tech computers, headphones, and keyboards used by the gamers. And I spoke with Razer's CEO, Min Liang Tan, and asked him why Razer believes in the future of PCs. The um, demise of the PC market has been uh, greatly exaggerated. I think primarily the, de uh, the decline of the PC industry has been kind of been driven by the lack of innovation in the space. You know, the guys like Dell, HP, they haven't been innovating uh, in the space. It's just a, a whole churning out of Me Too products all the time. So in essence, what we've done in the past couple of years is we've been viewed as the top PC designers of, of laptops, super thin, super sexy laptops out there. Well, you are making a big effort to innovate in the space, but the decline is not imaginary. I mean, sales were down 10% from 2014 to 2015. Yet, you are really putting a lot of time and effort. Why specifically? Well, when was the last time that you wanted a PC, you know, badly? So, in essence, uh, about three years ago, we designed what we called the first true gaming laptop, and that was the Razer Blade. And we had lines out there at Microsoft stores just waiting to buy the latest gaming laptop from us. And that was the Razer Blade, and at the CES show this year, we presented what we wanted to be a mainstream product for gamers and productivity workers, for everyone out there. So this is the Razer Blade Stealth. It didn't just win one award, it won 16 awards at the, at the CES show. Min, you were ahead of the game when it came to wearable tech uh, with the Nabu wristband, mm -hmm. which was uh, a combination of a smartwatch and a fitness band. Now you've got the Nabu smartwatch. Yes. What is unique about that? Well, this is a smartwatch that we, we, we've kind of coined the term that it's, a, it's not a smartwatch, but it's a watch that's smart. So one of the challenges with uh, wearables today is battery life. So what we've done, and you can see over here, right. is that it's got basic digital watch functions. Everything from additional alarms to um, world timers, etc. And this, with a single battery, lasts for about 18 months. But what is so great about a smartwatch is it not just really my phone on my wrist, okay, and it measures how many steps I take. Is this really a lasting trend? Because the Apple Watch, the Samsung watches, they haven't been as big sellers as people had predicted. Is this just a fad, perhaps? Well, I think it's just in the nascent stages. Uh, as I've mentioned, battery life is a challenge at this point of time. And uh, it's, things are just going to get slightly better. Think about it like the first iPhone, you know. Um, and with the Nabu and the Nabu Watch, what we see is a growth uh, trajectory for a whole new category, and things will get better as um, more and more people find additional functions to use it. So we are ex still excited about the uh, wearables category, and we think it's um, going to be a huge category in the future. One thing that seems particularly exciting is the fact that the devices can communicate uh, with each other sure. in terms of having them in the proximity of one another. Tell me about that. We like to call this the band-to-band -band communication. So for that matter, if I meet somebody else with an Abu watch, I, I can shake uh, the user's hand and boom, we can be exchanging information, uh, Facebook profiles, Twitter, followers. But you have uh, to followers. agree to this in advance. Absolutely. So this is uh, totally optional and uh, you can set it in the uh, Nabu app. You're also doing an interesting partnership with WeChat, with Tencent and WeChat. What are the details there? Well, you know, right from the outset, whether it's the Nabu or the Nabu watch, it streams all the notifications right to your wrist. So if you've got a WhatsApp message or a WeChat message, it streams across. Now, we've taken this um, integration even further with a super popular mobile app in China called WeRun. 
and it's a bit of a side scroller game of sorts. You run as far as you can, a little bit like Temple Run if you if you think about it. But we've added a little spin to it. As you walk a little further, your Nabu uh, or your Nabu watch would would uh, notify the, the game, and you can get a, a distance boost. You sleep well at night, boom, you've got an extra life in the game itself. So we've kind of put this whole life is just a game concept oh. and blur the lines in between. What if you don't have a good night's rest? Does that mean you lose a life in the oh, game? Not right now, though. <laughs> okay, looking at the pros and cons. And speaking of gaming, virtual reality, that certainly seems to be the next frontier. Amazon reportedly developing a virtual reality platform. Facebook buying Oculus, making sure that they're going to have a foot in the door when this really takes off. You have your own virtual reality set. What is the outlook in terms of Razer and virtual reality? So last year, we took the decision that what we wanted to do was to ensure that virtual reality would remain open for all. And what we started was an all new initiative called the Open Source Virtual Reality. OSVR. So what OSVR is today is a set of standards that completely opens up uh, virtual reality for developers, hackers out there, um, users, to essentially enable anyone to standardize their content, to standardize their hardware for all. Think about it a little bit like uh, the Android for VR. With the openness and everyone contributing to um, developing greater VR technology with OSVR, we believe that we're going to be able to see mass market adoption of VR sooner rather than later.